Huddleston in 19, let me, correct, Tom, correct me if I'm wrong on any of these. The first class stamp was two cents. They're now 49. The U.S. declared war on Germany. First combat troops in, arrived in France. Woodrow Wilson president, population only 103 million. Chicago, the world's greatest city, won the World Series. The average income, $680 a year. Half that amount for women. Boo. <laughs> the average car though is two thousand bucks. Gasoline, twelve cents a gallon. Loaf of bread, seven cents. Dozen eggs, thirty-four cents. Quart of milk, nine cents. Pound of steak, twenty-six cents. Refrigerators first offer for nine hundred dollars. Piggly Wiggly, first self-serve chain. And the New York Times reports that John D. Rockefeller is the world's first billionaire. But we all know a billionaire would never get to the White House, right? <laughs> so, that year, do you know what the odds were, if you were born in 1917, of becoming a centenarian, 100 years old? 0.04%. 0.04%. Bravo Zulu, Admiral Vesey. And you know what Bravo Zulu means, right, Kerry? Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> the um, <laughs> the um, 0.04%. If you're about my generation, it's about 6 7%. But if you're born today, Social Security lookout is 29%. Well, because of this event, we've had a lot of cablegrams coming in. Two of them on kind of time machine cablegrams. And we, uh, we, we have these cablegrams coming in for you, Joe. And I got them right here. Let's see. First one here is, um, uh, is, David, are you here? David, I have a cablegram here from a time machine for Admiral Vasey. Would you be kind enough to present it to him? Get your hands off. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Attention on deck. Wow. You want to use the microphone? Yes. I don't think get there. I'll see you at midnight. We'll talk about this. You'll be by yourself. <laughs> yeah, that's what you Don't said be in a dark corner. <laughs> You all can see this, right? This is a Western Union cablegram. Yes. Those of you who are into history, if you want a copy, it's not on. It's not on. It went off. A little louder, please. Can you hear me now? No. Yeah. It's called Voice Power. 17 March, 1943. It's a Western Union cablegram to Lieutenant Lloyd Joe Vasey from Harry Truman. Joe. Not sure I feel comfortable about the Navy guy romancing my daughter, Margaret. <laughs> Stop telling her she is going to be a future Admiral wife. Stop. Please remember, Joe. Stop. The buck stops at my desk. Stop. Your commander in chief. Stop. Out. Harry Truman. <laughs> We have a uh, Sergeant uh, Will Bolfin. Are you here, Sergeant Bolfin? I understand you're we're honored to have you here, and I understand you also have a Navy PACOM Admiral here also. Well, we want to introduce the Marine first. <laughs> All right, so uh, I'll start off with a story before I read the telegram. So uh, I've had a lot of interesting folks have dined at Quarters A, the, the PACOM house at Pearl Harbor. But the most interesting evening that I've had since I've been in Hawaii was the dinner uh, that uh, we hosted for Senator John McCain uh, and Admiral Vasey. That was a night to remember when Admiral Vasey 
was telling Senator McCain about being the XO to Admiral John S. McCain, Jr. That was an unbelievable <laughs> evening. So thank you. Oh, we've got another one here. All right, so uh, we have a telegram here. Uh, what did you call this telegram? A time machine telegram. Time, it's a time machine, valid one. Uh, it could be called an alternative fact <laughs> tel telegram. I, I'm, I'm just saying. Uh, I don't remember what's, 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 what the Navy guys call a real sea story. There you go. Right. <laughs> so, uh, Admiral Vasey has a reputation. Uh, and so, uh, I'm going to read this telegram from the actress, Betty Hutton. Does everyone know who Betty Hutton is? Yes. All right. Indeed. All right. To Lieutenant Lloyd Joe Vasey from Betty Hutton, 10 November 1945. From Betty Hutton, your personal Hollywood starlet. Stop. Stop being stop. Stop. The one that replaced Linda Darnell. Stop. Joe, are you trying to get rid of me too? Stop. The guys call it Scuttlebutt. Stop. It says, you've seen that beautiful woman named Lillian stop and preferring her over me, a movie star, stop. <laughs> Darling Joe, I have to reluctantly agree, stop. You have very good taste, stop. Lillian is a keeper, stop. A big hug to my favorite lost love, stop. Betty. Oh, I'd like to propose a toast to the woman that introduced me to the Basie family. The most beautiful woman I've ever met in Hawaii, Lillian Basie. <laughs> now, we were able to get a special telegram out of uh, Washington, D.C. recently because there's been a lot of work going on there with, uh, with the uh, Supreme Court. It looks like they passed you over for the Supreme Court time. Would you like to? Who's there? We'd like to have Admiral. <laughs> Say good. <laughs> I received a, a telegram here, Tom. We'd like you to present it to Admiral Vasey. Admiral Fargo, please. All right, let me hand this to Joe. Don't open it until I finish uh, reading. Yeah, it's cuddle some. You're the one you're gonna, you're the one you're gonna prize. Yeah, before I read this, I just wanted to, to say uh, one thing that, that Joe really knows. that You've got a lucky bag over there from the great class of 39, and everybody ought to recognize that other than the class of 70 and maybe 78 or something. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, <laughs> but we're, uh, we were half of what the great class of 39 is, so congratulations, Joe. <laughs> Unlike Admiral Harris's... Uh, uh, message. Uh, this is very current. Matter of fact, uh, I don't know how it got in my hands, uh, <laughs> and we can investigate that in the future here. But let me read this because it's dated 31 January 2017. It starts uh, Admiral Vasey, stop. Admiral Vasey, I think I said that, stop. May I call you Joe? Stop. Happy birthday. Stop. Now down to business. Your country is starving for leadership, Joe. Stop. We need an officer from the great class of 39. Stop. To report back on board. Stop. Aware that you are a touch slower. Stop. And have a new, sexier voice. Stop. Nonetheless, we respect and need your brain power, Joe, in Washington. Stop. Have four, I repeat, four, stop. Four star Marine generals running the Pentagon. Stop. We need a strong Navy leader. Stop. That's an order, Admiral. Stop. Make America great again. Stop. <laughs> Donald J. Trump. Stop. The 45th President of the United States. Man, maybe this isn't a cable. It's, this is a Twitter. It's a Twitter gram. <laughs> well said. Well said. <laughs> okay, now we have a... Uh... By popular demand, we're replaying an episode that occurred at the Outrigger Canoe Club, and I'm looking for Paul. Did you come up here, Paul? The, um, two nights ago, we had a rehearsal, and it's been tuned up since. There's kind of a special report. Um, I just would like you to turn it over, Paul, because the women here voted you as the best voice in Oahu. Ooh. 
So they said you were a mellifluous voice. That's a oh, big act you. to follow. Thank you. Well, I have a very special report about Admiral Vasey, and it is an honor to give it here tonight because he is the most interesting admiral in the world. Opportunity knocks, and he's not home. Opportunity waits. <laughs> the Admiral's personality is so magnetic, he is unable to carry credit cards. <laughs> when he arrived at the Naval Academy, the head Admiral met him just to be sure that he was comfortable. <laughs> and when his boat entered Yokosuka Bay in 1945, the enemy immediately surrendered. True story, <laughs> true story. Cuba imports cigars from him. <laughs> and mosquitoes refused to bite him purely out of respect. <laughs> he is the most interesting admiral in the world. When he meets the Pope, the Pope kisses his ring. <laughs> and his mother, she has a small tattoo which says, son. <laughs> At museums, he's allowed to touch the art. Oh. And therapists open up to him about their personal problems. <laughs> and if the Admiral patted you on the back, you would list that in your resume. <laughs> when pulled over by the cops, the Admiral lets the cops off with a warning. <laughs> and he is the most interesting admiral in the world. In a past life, he was himself. <laughs> His lovemaking has been detected by a seismograph. <laughs> he gave his father the talk. <laughs> and Superman, he has pajamas with his logo on it. <laughs> his fortune cookie simply read, congratulations. <laughs> and he is the life of many parties, which he has never even attended. And if he were to punch you in the face, you would have to fight off the strong urge not to thank him. He is the most interesting admiral in the world. His tears can cure cancer, but too bad he never cries. His passport requires no photograph. And the last time he flirted with danger, danger got all clingy. And once he received a standing ovation from a jury box, and his small talk, that has altered foreign policies worldwide, especially in Asia. He is the most interesting admiral in the world. He once ran a marathon because it was on the way. <laughs> his two cents is worth $29.58. He is the most interesting admiral in the world. And if he were to mispronounce your name, you would feel compelled to change it. <laughs> the admiral once had an awkward moment just to see what it would feel like. <laughs> and people hang on his every word, even the prepositions. <laughs> The Admiral can disarm you with his looks or with his hands. His blood smells like cologne. And once a rattlesnake bit him, after five days of excruciating pain, the snake finally died. <laughs> 
<laughs> Even his enemies list him as their emergency contact number. <laughs> and lastly, the United States Marines want to be more like him. <laughs> Admiral, a gift from P.T. Brent and Hisako. <laughs> It's time for you to do the little ceremony here. So we provide the cameras and everything. Just before the World War II show. Okay. We were, a lot of women are wondering where you're based in World War II. Were you in the, the sub service? <laughs> I was. You were. Still stealthily hiding away. The, uh, in the, in my the, dreams. That was the real Navy, wasn't it? Where the. Uh... So, so I'm told. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we'd like to turn the mic over to you. Okay. Yeah. Well, we, we're going to have Admiral Reggie, who's um, a, a, a submariner. And we're going to have to cut the first cake. I hope everybody's seen it. By the way, did you know, Tom, there's a, a beer out of Colorado called Pride Runs Deep? No, I didn't. Yes, there is. I thought you owned it. <laughs> I cleaned it. I know. And hey, we're having a cake cutting ceremony. We need a dish okay. for the um, guest of honor. All right. We're to cut the one for the guest of honor. And All right. Here, the, the, so the ceremonial first uh, first cut goes uh, right through the middle, but then uh, we will actually cut it up into s actual serving sizes. <laughs> oh. All right. That's right. <laughs> All right. Ready? All right, drum roll, please. There we are. Right. Oh, excellent. All right. Voila. All right. That's it. <laughs>